Okay. Okay, Mr. Chairman. This is the meeting for the Mobile City Planning Commission for Thursday, December 17th, 2020. General procedures for this remote meeting are as follows. I will announce an application for items where no one from the public is attending via Zoom. Staff will give an overview, including any comments received from the public. If a member of the public will attend the meeting, staff will announce their attendance and admit them at this time. Once the parties have joined the meeting, if needed, I will state the commission's rules regarding the number of speakers as well as speaking time. Each applicant is limited to a maximum of four speakers in support and four people in opposition limited to five minutes each. I will then announce the beginning of the public hearing. The applicant will present their case and up to three additional speakers if applicable for each speaker at the end of their presentation. I will ask if there are any questions from any commission members. Once the commission concludes their questions of the speaker in support of an application, I will then call for interested parties to speak. At the end of each speaker's presentation, I will again ask if there are any questions from the commission. The applicant will be given an opportunity to rebut in accordance with commission rules, two minutes. After the rebuttal, I will declare the public hearing closed and the commission will go into deliberation session. After the commission has rendered a decision, the applicant and concerned parties will leave the meeting or will be sent back to the waiting room by staff where they can disconnect. I will then call the next agenda item. Commission members and staff, please remember to keep your microphone on mute unless you are speaking to the meeting attendee. A roll call, myself is present, Ms. Libby Latham. Here. Mr. Alan Cameron. Here. Mr. Matt Anderson. Here. Mr. Nick Omberger. Here. Ms. Bess Rich. Here. Mr. Don Hembry. Here. Mr. Jay Stubbs. Here. Do we have a quorum? Um, we've received the uh, amended uh, agenda via email. Is there a motion for adoption of the agenda? So moved. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All the agenda is adopted. We will begin with holdovers. Item number one. 5377 Moffitt Road held over um, uh, uh, this request for holdover. Yes, sir. The applicant submitted the request for holdover uh, a couple of weeks ago or early last week. Anyway, we had adequate time to send out revised notices. Um, so this will be held over until the February 18th meeting. All right. Item number one is held over until February 18th, 2021. Item number two, Williams Financial Subdivision 2614, 2616 and 2618 Dawson Street and, and 6 and 8 Packham Street. Recommended for tentative approval. Uh, staff. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, if I may, I have admitted into the meeting uh, Don Bowden and Jerry Bird. Uh, can you both hear us? I can. This is Don. Thank you, Don. Hey. Jerry? Jerry, I'm here. Okay, thanks. Um, Mr. Chairman, before uh, they began speaking, I wanted to say that based on additional research, somewhat outlined in the staff report, if you recall at the commission's December 3rd meeting, there was a question regarding this alley. 
and staff uh, recommended denial of access and wanted an opportunity to do further research on this alley. We did conduct further research. We contacted the city's real estate department. They have done additional research. What we, we have not found documentation regarding the alley. What we did find is that there is a strip. If you notice along the edge of this property, and you can see it extending northwardly. There is a strip of property that is shown on the tax assessor's records, as well as the city's GIS, that strip as being owned by the city of Mobile. We asked for city real estate to follow up on it, and they have not been able to find a deed. However, both planning staff and real estate staff have found deeds for this strip going back to the 1920s, where all of these properties fronting Tacon Street, their legal descriptions exclude, they read either seven feet or quote, a ditch. Um, so what we staff uh, have contacted city real estate, city real estate is asked, it has request that a title search be done. Um, they have asked for that and they said they felt confident that the report could be provided back to us by January 4th which is the Monday before the Planning Commission's January 7th meeting. So because this is shown as city property and the title of it is in question, we are asking for a holdover until the next meeting. Harvey, what would that date be? It would be the January 7th meeting. Can I add something to that? The, the title search that staff has done, yes, all of the lots north of us that face Tacon Street do say less than except or west of a ditch. It does not say the city owns that property. It just says that those owners do not own it. I have furnished a deed to our property that says we go to the west line of Boyle's Lane for the first 111 feet from Dolphin Street going north. And our plat shows a 2.2 jog, 2.2 foot jog right there. And that's where that division starts. But I understand I'm trying to do a title search. Tax assessor has not always been accurate on putting ownerships on. I know of other cases where tax assessor said, oh, there's property there, sold it for taxes, when in fact it didn't exist. Um, now, city may own it, but like I say, they haven't been able to find a deed to their portion of those lots. The only deeds they have is for what is west of that ditch but we have a deed that joins the west line of Boyle's Lane where I show it joins. Gary, does it show your line going all the way back to where your, your uh, client's lot ends? No, it's right. If you start at Dolphin Street, it goes 111 feet and then there's a little 2.2 foot jog to the west. And yeah. then that gets over. That's where our deed stopped at the ditch and goes north and the, we're comprised of four different parcels and those two northern parcels stop at the ditch. But the one with that house down at the southeast corner where it says building, that one goes to the west line of Boyle's Lane. So what you were trying to accomplish is to get access to the back of your, your client's 
that building from Boyle's Lane. So are you saying that at that line to where that west line of Boyle's Lane, is that, is there a property line in dispute there along that line or is it just further on up Boyle's Lane? Well, I think further down, if the city tries to claim that on down to Dolphin Street, it may get us a little too close to the um, building. I mean, if, if the city comes up with a deed that says they own that portion down there, then the title company that insured that is going to probably be disappointed. Uh, I, like I say, we have a deed to it. And the tax assessor and city website says, oh, no, city owns it. But uh, I, I, I'll let Don address the issue of do we need access to Boyle's Lane. And, and we do not. After the last meeting, after the last meeting, we went back and met with our client and proposed he consider a different way to achieve his back entry. And we do not need access to Bulls Lane. Problem solved then, right? I would think so. <laughs> for, um, at this moment, but not for the long haul. <laughs> no. no. Ownership. I understand what Jerry is saying, and let me make clear. City staff conducted research. City staff has now engaged the services of a title company to confirm that there is no city property on this plat because there have been deeds found by city staff illustrating that there is a sliver or at least was a sliver that connected with the existing strip that continues to the north. I understand that there, that they may have a deed for that but I don't think anyone has found where this strip was ever, that the ownership of it was ever granted over anyway. Is there, is there? I'm sorry, what? Is there, is there a ditch there? There. Well, they may be further north, there's a pipe in there covered over a uh, portion of our property but I, i'm not sure how far north that pipe goes and it may turn into a ditch again well if there's a pipe in a ditch i, I bet we could probably convince some people to give you give it to you if you want it <laughs> if you know who owns it well again that was the reason why real estate has engaged the services of a title company. The, the preliminary look of the, the drainage system looked like there was a, a pipe that went south to Dolphin Street along that along that property line there, probably about where Margaret's marking up. So, but again, it's not it's not survey grade accuracy. It's just showing that that it's there. And if there's not a physical ditch, that's probably where the pipe is. The pipe is probably sitting in the what was once a ditch. Well, as but, far as this application is concerned, I mean, is the applicant agreeable to the conditions then since there's no access needed to that down Boyle's Lane? Yes. Margaret, is this something that just needs to be dealt with from, from a legal department standpoint? Or, I mean, just and give them their application <laughs> approval or what do we need to do from here? My... My recommendation, staff's recommendation, is that we hold it over until the January 7th meeting. In the absence of a holdover, um, Doug, can it be approved subject to the conditions and including something about the um, the final report from the title company? Well, the final report from the title company is going to be received just a couple of days before the next meeting. So I'm not sure what that's really going to do for us. 
um, if we approve that subject that that condition because it still won't be resolved until December. I mean, the January seventh. Well, but you know, either way is fine. Yeah, I guess I'm just missing something because this. I mean, if there's a discrepancy about where the property line is, I mean, if, if we approve the application like as is as presented, and there's a how does the I guess the property line discrepancy would interfere with the actual application because that's what's showing on this application. So. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't appear that the application is trying to take over any city owned property. Is that right, Margaret? Well, we just, the, it would be if the title search comes back and the city owns this strip, which is essentially the east seven feet yeah. of the lot. B seven feet of the south hundred and ten feet. Correct. Well, I mean, I don't see. I, I'll go along with Mr. Hembry that this application could be approved, and if the property line needs to be adjusted, that little two point two foot jog, or if it moves over three or four feet, that can be done, and it will not change the look of the lot to the extent that I would think you need to um, see it again. If we approve this application today and the title search comes back first week of January and, there's, and it shows the property line on that east side uh, or the side of joining Bulls Lane as not being where this application is showing that I could see how it might present a problem. But I mean, it's just such a narrow strip of land. I don't, it's not, we want it right, but it's not that much property that anybody's gonna have any use for it. So um, we've already held it over once. I'm just trying to find a way to, to give them what they're needing to move forward with their project. Yeah, I agree with Don. Margaret, if the um, title report comes back and, and Jerry has to maneuver that property line a foot here, a foot there, and he can do that, we can approve that administratively if, if the application's approved today, right? Yes. Or just, just have him correct, the, you know, redo the plat. Correct, because staff's big concern is that based on what we see and the records we find, we have seven feet that is likely the city's property. And so we have to be very cognizant of that. Yeah. Um, if the title report comes back that it's not our property, yes, we can proceed with, if the commission so chooses today, we can proceed with final approval of this plat. Robert, can you flip back to his proposed site plan? I mean, because if a, a foot's one thing, if he's got to find seven feet within a, in a, in a layout, you know, that might be something totally different. Well, I'm all, I'm all for helping it along, but I mean, uh, yeah, I, hold I, on, let me pull up something else. And, um, and Margaret, it, did yes. it have something to do with egress and ingress of that Boyle's Lane and whether that it was a city right away or whether it was private? Wasn't, wasn't that something also part of the title search and property lines? It wasn't part of, quote, the title search. It was part of, you know, one of the staff's recommendations uh, because, first of all, we did not initially, Boyle's on the plat was shown as private. Mm -hmm. And then the day or so prior to the December 3rd meeting, uh, the applicant came back and said, no, it's a public alley and we want access. Mm -hmm. so recommend yeah, I, I know that was part, I, I, I was trying to reach back and think of what we discussed. And I know that was something because they wanted some access at, at that, that the staff had said no to. That is correct. And it's because mm -hmm. the timing ordinance does not allow access to the city right of way are uh, maneuvering for a parking space right. on property and city right of way. Right, yeah, I knew that was part of it. But if it's private, then that becomes 
moved, but we don't know yet. Right. Well, for this application, since they're not wanting access, does it really matter whether it's public or private? I thought no. they did want the access. I thought no, that they, was they, could, they come in today and say they don't want the access. Oh, okay. correct. Okay. All right. Well, then that is correct. not a non issue, then, of course. Um, Except for as to who owns that strip of property. Right. Yes. Right. So this particular drawing that you're looking at is schematic because we haven't developed the plans yet. And this shows that we would not need access to Bulls Lane. But the question would become if the city suddenly owns seven more feet, what will you require as a rear setback? Because then the building gets very mm. skinny to accommodate yeah. parking. Now, if I read the section for this particular neighborhood, I'm not required any rear or side yard setback. I'm just required 25 from Dolphin and 20 from Tacon. If mm -hmm. that's the case, I'll still be able to leave 10 or 12 feet and be fine, even if you take the seven. Mm -hmm. But if you require 20, then we're getting into a whole different can of worms because I can't get a building big enough to do what a professional office needs. With an alley, there's probably more flexibility on what the right of way could be based on you know, that it's not a, a thoroughfare or, you know, a residential street per se. So you might be able to um, vote and then just let the city find out and you all find out, you know, where the lines are as far as, you know, other people using it as an alleyway. And if it's the city's. I can tell you in part of the research for this, that and if we no longer need to look at the site plan, I'm gonna go back to the presentation. Hold on. Okay. Um, is the PowerPoint visible to the commission? Yes. Yes. No. yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, there are actual right of way width standards in the subdivision regulations for alleys. Mm -hmm. However, uh, in conducting research on this, uh, city real estate did find where approximately 200 feet in length of the alley up here at the northern end towards Cameron Street has been vacated. So, you vacated know, by the city? vacated by the city. But again, that is strictly for the alley. And it seemed to be at a point beyond this seven foot strip in question. What if we were to approve the application based on just a corrected and verified survey? If it's agreeable to legal, uh, you know, we're agree staff's agreeable to that. If it can be, if the condition can be worded uh, subject to the city legal department verifying the eastern boundary line via title report yeah okay. you have any other questions or discussion Is there anything else from staff or the uh, owners? Nothing from staff. Hearing that, is there a um, motion for this application? Move to approve based on staff recommendations um, with the verified, with the extra condition of verified the, uh, the deed and the uh, eastern, eastern property line along Boyle's Lane. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Moving to new subdivision applications. Item number three, Cornerstone Plaza subdivision. 5450, 5452, and 5454 Cottage Hill Road. It's recommended for tentative approval. Staff comments. I have admitted Eric Jackson with Row Engineering into the meeting. Eric, can you hear us? Eric? Hold on. That's connecting to audio. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Jackson's in the meeting, and this is for application number three on Cottage Hill Road, Cornerstone Plaza. Mr. Chairman, you're muted. Sorry. That's okay. Does there next this is recommended for tentative approval. Does the owner have any questions or comments? I did I guess I did have a couple of questions uh for clarification on the uh the right of way through there and the required dedication. Um I guess one the, the I guess the only thing we had was from the tax maps that shows the right of way is kind of going back and forth through there. But we did we did show it as being just when it gets to our property coming back to 130 feet. I don't know if there was something else that the city had that actually says that it's 100 feet because that was requested that we label the the right of way of 100 feet through there. And it. It, I suppose it could be more clearly stated. Staff is strictly looking to confirm that there is a minimum of 100 feet of right of way through there. Okay, I got you. Um, and then, assuming that there there is now, would that still would we still be required to dedicate 50 feet from the center line to our property? Do you have less than 50 feet from the center line to your property? That's correct. Right now, there, it's about 40 feet. Then yes. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Well, then in that case, we're fine with all the other comments. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Any other, uh, anything, <laughs> anything else from staff? Yes, sir. Hearing none, is the uh, closed public hearing, is there a motion for this application? I move we approve this application subject to staff recommendations. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Item passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number four, 6621 and 6625 Apple Cross Drive South, Inverness Subdivision, uh, 
Second unit resubdivision of lots 36 and 37. Staff recommends tentative approval. Any comments from staff? Or is the owner present? Uh, yes, I have admitted Robert Anderson and Brent Anderson. Uh, Robert Brent Anderson, can you hear us? Yes, I can. This is Bob Anderson. Okay. And yes, ma'am, I can hear you too. This is Brent. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chairman, they're in the meeting. Hey, we are looking at your project. It's recommended for tentative approval. Do you have any additional comments or clarifications that you or questions? Uh, no, sir, I do not. Uh, I do not either. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Are they uh, agreeable to the conditions? Um, I apologize. Can you repeat that? Are you, uh, is the applicant agreeable to all the conditions that staff put on here? Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Any additional questions or comments from staff? And hearing, no, sir. Uh, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion for this application. I move we approve the staff recommendations. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Item passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you. New plan unit development application. Item number five, 531 Hamilton Boulevard, all crane subdivision. It's recommended for tentative approval. Uh, is the applicant and the present? Uh, yes, the applicant is, and I believe he wanted to discuss. Uh, Eric, are you here? I was watching it on YouTube. I had to Zoom open as well. There we go. Eric, I'm sending you a message to unmute. Okay, can okay. you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the commission received some comments from Mr. Jackson that Bert forward, Hoffman forwarded to y'all earlier today via email uh, regarding conditions one and two. Uh, the staff would recommend that you just add the words if applicable to the end of both of those conditions. Okay. Um, sir, have you seen the uh, staff recommendations, the conditions? Yes. Are you in agreement with them outside of your uh, comments pertaining to the structures? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Any additional uh, information or comments from staff? Staff, like I said, would simply just recommend on condition number one and two that the commission add the words if applicable at the end. It does appear based on the photographs that that is now considered um, equipment and not a building. That can be done. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion. Move to approve based on staff recommendations, amending item number one and two, adding if applicable. Second. Finding. Property moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Findings of fact, please. Oh, oh I'm sorry. This is a cut. Let me look real quick. Bear with me. Give me just a second. 
uh, uh, based on findings of facts A, B, C, and F. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number six, 429 Bel Air Boulevard, Super Mega Boat and RV Storage. Uh, this is recommended for tentative approval. Is the applicant present? Yes, yes. it's Ms. Jackson again. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, you also have correspondent uh, forwarded again by Mr. Hoffman regarding this application from Mr. Jackson. Um, standard requirement of the sidewalk along Television Avenue. However, Mr. Jackson does have some concerns and questions regarding the installation of the sidewalk. In short, staff's response is, if the sidewalk is to not be installed, a sidewalk waiver would need to be requested. Uh, any additional questions or comments from the owner? No. Uh, are you in agreement with the conditions uh, outside of the sidewalk issue? Yes. Any questions or comments from commissioners? I do. Uh, is staff going to recommend the denial or the approval of the sidewalk waiver if that is submitted based on the site plan? It's, the sidewalk waiver has not been submitted. So staff's position is if <laughs> sidewalk is not, is not desired to be installed, they do not need to file an application for a sidewalk waiver. Uh, Mr. Jackson did reference in his correspondence some existing trees that, would, that are located where a sidewalk would need to be constructed. Um, that could be factored into the waiver request. Also bearing in mind, if those trees are to be removed, that would require an application to the tree commission because they have authority over trees in the city's rights of way. Well, I think this is an area that we should require the sidewalks as long as there's no heritage oaks or anything along that line that would interfere with that. Um, this is the old Toys R Us building, right? That is uh, south of it. It's behind it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, unless there's some kind of... So the, the property along Television Avenue, that those are the trees? Yes, sir. Okay. Are there any heritage... Of course, we don't know if there's any heritage trees there at this point in time, do we? Well, yes, sir. We have surveyed it. They're, they are all pines. Uh, oh, yeah, they're pine trees. Okay. Well, if they're just pine trees, I would think a sidewalk would be desirable over the over the pine trees in that area. Yeah, absolutely. You know, our sidewalk waivers. Um, I've I've been a proponent of several waivers before, uh, when it's out in the boonies or when it's uh, really isolated from other things. But this is the opposite. <laughs> this is totally the opposite of that in every way. So if we approve this application as presented today, then it's going to require the sidewalk, correct, Margaret? Yes, sir. Okay. The only thing that would keep it from, the only thing that would allow the sidewalk to be waived is a sidewalk waiver application filed with the commission and approved by the commission. And that could be done after this application is approved today? Yes. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. 
Move to approve based on staff recommendations. Uh, I think we have findings of facts. Findings of facts, A, B, C, and D. Second. Property will be seconded. Any uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item passes. Thank you, sir. Moving to our group application, item number seven, 425 Evergreen Road, uh, Corpus Christi Subdivision, PUD. Okay, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, I have admitted Don Wilson. I believe it's still connecting to audio as well as Brian Lee, who uh, is here with questions and concerns regarding the application. Brian, can you hear us? I can hear you, Margaret. I'm just not seeing myself, the picture. Uh, yeah, it's limited because okay. of the, uh, the PowerPoint running. Don, can you hear us? Don, can you hear us? It's in the meeting. Don Whittington? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Don Whittington's here for the application. And again, uh, Brian Lee is a concerned citizen. Okay. The subdivision, uh, PUD and the planning approval items are all recommended for approval. Has the owner seen the staff comments? Okay, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Don Whittington is here for the application and again. Feedback. Hello? He needs to turn his computer off, his sound off. Has the owner seen staff recommendations? Comments? Yes. Um, did you have issue with any of them or questions? Uh, no. Uh, everything can be complied with. Okay. Mr. Whittington? Yes. yes. Mr. Whittington, would you please pause your YouTube live stream that's giving feedback into the meeting? Okay, if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, no. Uh, okay. I'll just put you on mute. If you would just listen to the live stream. If we have questions, we'll get back with you. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Applicant has uh, no problems with staff conditions. Uh, I think we have an applicant, I mean, a concerned citizen that has questions. So that is correct. You can speak at this time. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Brian Lee. I live at 300 Trent Mill Court, which is the Ridge, Ridgefield subdivision behind Corpus Christi. If you go back, Margaret, please, to the vicinity map, the existing zone, yeah, the one that just flashed by. Um, there's been a dedicated walk path from Ridgefield to Corpus Christi and to the subdivision. You can see that small little line right there. We were under the impression, I've lived here 30 years, that it extended all the way up into Corpus. Reading the staff report, I find it referred to as an unopened portion of McKenna Drive. Doesn't change much. It's still um, a well-used path by not only church members, school members, uh, everybody, joggers, people visiting, uh, weekend walkers. And my question or concern is the protection for this dedicated path. Um, many years ago, back in about 2005, where you see the part that's labeled vacant land, the uh, 425 Evergreen, there used to be a house there that Deacon Arthur lived in, um, owned by the church. 
uh, around 2005, there was a chain link fence along that northern border. It came from the walk path part over there off of uh, between the two houses in Ridgefield. And they tore down the fence to create overflow parking. Um, the fence separated the walkers, the pedestrians from any vehicles. And then of course it was gone. Right now to this day, three quarters of this dedicated walk path are protected by a fence. So what I would ask the commission or the staff to consider is two things. Um, over here, you've got um, um, where you are proposing or a recommendation, a condition is to have a sidewalk along Evergreen Road. Also to reestablish, once they finish all the construction, I understand equipment's gonna be moving right now today. There's a large pile of construction dirt or some kind of push up from the site that's, that's in the walk path, that's kind of blocking it. We understand that has to happen with progress, but if, after it's all over to get the walk path reestablished and then hopefully the staff would consider having them as a condition, put a chain link fence back up to uh, create some separation between a parking lot that's gonna be used by vehicles and pedestrian. And that's my only comment, we're not opposed to it. We just wanna ensure this walkable, this very desirable feature in Ridgefield. Uh, we're on fourth generation folks going up there now remains intact and is protected. Thank you for your time, folks. Do any, any questions by uh, commissioners? I, I don't, it's not necessarily a question because I um, agree with Brian, uh, a resident in that neighborhood about the connectivity. Um, a fence would be fine. I imagine that new um, parking lot will be curbed, but um, if not a fence to border it off, then um, could a sidewalk be placed along that side of the parking lot to create the connectivity and then um, the sidewalk that would go down um, the evergreen as well. So ask for a sidewalk along um, McGregor, I mean, uh, not McGregor, uh, uh, McKenna. You see, I mean, a fence is fine, just something to separate if it can't be a sidewalk there. Well, those those trees that are there, if there was a sidewalk there, those trees would have to come out. Well, there's a path trees. for sure, you know, that's been, you know, put out by the number of years of use. So um, I, I don't know what the, that measures, but if a fence keeps people from, you know, keeps it a safer for kids to not walk through a parking lot at all, um, that would be great. But a sidewalk would also be something that could be um done as well to keep it so that it's separate and then connects to the sidewalk that goes to the children's center that's right up the the walkway there uh, miss beth uh miss richard you referring to something along the lines of the three foot fences that they have around parking lots like that yeah that, that would do too i i hear i hear exactly what what um brian lee is saying about keeping that pathway so that it's it's not a part of the parking um, because when it's used, it'll be better that it's an improved and not a tentative parking lot, but it's just a way to keep that pathway and either make it a sidewalk, a green space, and then fence off the parking. It, it just something that delineates it and makes sure that especially kids who can't be seen running behind cars, you know, just keep out of it as they're walking past getting to church or getting to their school and then visiting others. I thought we had uh, I thought we had parking lot screening requirements. I think that's one it would have, but I, I, I don't know because it's an unopened right away. I know this it is city property and yeah. it's never been abandoned. So it could be, a, it could get a pathway. I wouldn't want to see the trees gone. I hear what you're saying, because I can see them in the picture. Maybe Brian is more familiar of how much space is there. And if he's still listening, if he could be bought in, he would, you know, know his kids were in and out of that property for years. <laughs> well, typically, you know, I mean, I get, I get it's unopened and unopened right away, but if you're a budding like uh, if you're abutting a right away, I thought you had to have some kind of screening, but I mean, that, that would be- Mr. Anderson, uh, you and only have to screen a parking lot uh, on a minor street when it is across the street from a residential use. And in this case, since it is across the street from 
church uses, it's not required to be screened on Evergreen or on McKenna, but it is required to be buffered where it abuts residential properties. Okay, thank you. The only question regarding the sidewalk on McKenna is, is there a precedent for the city uh, having a sidewalk on city property that's a non-open right-of-way? It's a right-of-way, and I think when Ridgefield was platted, um, the thought was that it, that sidewalk would go right along the sidewalk that, you know, was either, I don't know if the church was already on that property or whether it was all residential at the time, because uh, I wasn't, you know, present to know that. But you can see that that pathway connects to the street that it, it ran into to keep people out of their cars, but walking it. And so it's, it's become a really good um, thing for the neighborhood to be connected to that church and all that activity uh, there. Um, and, and so I, I don't see where asking the impact of putting a sidewalk along that line, it, it wouldn't be the city constructing it. It would be the impact of now there's a parking lot that, that you know, wasn't there. It was a residence that had its own fence, so to speak, keeping kids out of it. So again, it's to make sure that you don't open something up that you know is a pathway of pedestrians, especially children, some who could be short and not seen by cars backing up. So uh, it's a way to keep them out of harm's way, to keep the path going. Or a fence as, as Brian you know, said. Or even so curb stoppers. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just thinking even curb stoppers or whatever those concrete things are called. Curb. Uh, they are required to have either yeah. curbing curb or stop. bumper stops. So they will have to prevent the vehicles from running bumper in stops. That's landscape area. But it would be nice to designate that as a walking pathway and not just a beaten trail that's been utilized because now you're getting development um, and you know putting it there would be a good thing because we know how well used it is and that it connects people and like I said gets them out of their cars and moving through sidewalk and kids bicycle it I mean it, it's it's a positive thing so I don't know if Brian is still listening if he could be bought in I don't know what your feelings are about bringing someone who had questions but He's recommending the fence, so certainly something that delineates the pathway and keeps it out of the parking. Um, this is Brian. I'm still listening, and I, and I hope it's okay for me to speak up here. Um, probably some of you are wondering, you know, are these children running back and forth on this path unsupervised? And the answer is yes. It's become a tradition in our neighborhood. The parents will drive from the other side up to the uh, beginning of this footpath that goes up to Corpus, and it's somewhat a rite of a passage when you think your child is old enough to let them go on their own. Yes, they are older children that go with them to kind of supervise. But to help y'all understand, to this day, 30 years later since I've moved in, I'm still one of the uh, homeowners that, that uh, goes up there with a backpack blower and, and maintains, trims the branches and everything so it stays open and, and there's no unstable footing for the children. The first part in Ridgefield has got an asphalt sidewalk and mm -hmm. probably the best thing because of all the trees and the roots under the ground. And I'm not necessarily looking for a concrete sidewalk because there are some very large trees, oak trees right next to the daycare area. Um, if we could have asphalt, I understand what Ms. Latham said about the curb stops. That would be good, but it doesn't keep a young child from then venturing up into the parking lot. That's my only reason for requesting a physical barrier, kind of like a, a constant reminder. We used to have one there. It worked excellent, and it takes you up to the beginning of the daycare where it picks up on the sidewalk is mm -hmm. my only point. Mr. Lee, you're just requesting that the... Uh that the applicant of the church put up a, a fence around the parking lot is that what you're requesting not necessarily around the parking lot on that northern side re-establish the fence that was there when there used to be a house it was torn down in about 2005 so i'm talking 200 feet of fence and the only reason i suggest chain link 
it's uh, it's not going to rot. It's it's very durable product. It's going to be there 20, 30 years with little to no maintenance. I don't know if it's within your purview to specify something like that, but the other three quarters of this path, including the daycare right there, um, I'm not sure how it shows because I really can't see, but that's the building that, yeah, that's daycare. Well, along that whole Southern uh, border is a chain link fence. And then all the way down into Ridgefield is chain link fence mm -hmm. on both sides. So it's one fourth, it's missing chain link to keep it all uh, uh, fenced in if you want to use that term. Is the attic agreeable to putting the fence up? Uh, I have a question. Uh, for staff and I guess for Doug, um, if it's not required per our ordinance, can we um, make them put the fence back on city property? No, I don't, we can ask for anything, but um, if that's something that would actually hinder, that we could hinder this application all over. The fence would need to be on the church property. Okay. But it was took strictly be voluntary by the church if uh, requested. Can we make it a requirement even though um, our current ordinance doesn't require it in that particular spot? i like Margaret to have input on that too, but I think from a safety concern, we would have the uh, some leeway to require some kind of buffer from the parking lot in an open walkway. Okay. Yes, because this is a planned unit development and a planning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think it is within the planning commission's purview to require the fence. Um, well, I'm not opposed to chain link and it seems to be that's what's in the surrounding area. Uh, the commission's looking to do that. I would put chain link or some other open metal durable fencing. So if they did something kind of like what Ms. Latham was talking about at McGill where they have like metal look pickets, it's still open. I think that's good, especially for young children, mm -hmm. you know, people being able to see them. And then just the durability of it, just to give an option. Great. Is the applicant agreeable to this? Let uh, me unmute him. Oh, good, he's there. Uh, the, well, the applicant, you know, already discussed having a sidewalk, you know, building a sidewalk through there. We never discussed having a fence. Uh, the idea was for the people that's utilizing the parking lot to be able to walk, be able to use the sidewalk. Um, but you know, if if if, uh, if it has to be a, a fence, uh, I guess so be it. But could it be something like uh, hedges, something like that, something a little more statically pleasing than chain link fence? Yeah, sure, I, I think, think it could I be. Think, I think we would be able to do something like that. Yeah, and and really, I mean, honestly, you could. Margaret, we could probably encourage something like uh, other parking lots do, like downtown. You have, you have, you know, an edge treatment, but you have ways you can, you know, there are little pathways and things so that people can get through more easily to daycare. I mean, I think all that, th all that is, those are details that could be handled administratively, correct? Yes, um, I do think some type of barrier in addition to the curbing. Uh, but yes, and we would want, again, just using an example of other schools, we'd want, if not a quote, pedestrian gate, an opening, you know, where people can walk to their car without having to walk all the way to the driveway type situation. You can have an opening here. Uh, the big thing is, I don't think anyone would want the opening to be in the parking lot where it walked right into a stall because that's just going to guide a child into traffic. Well, I, I like the conversation that talks about a barrier and something that creates a safety mechanism. Um, if it's not the chain link fence, like you said, or you know, some kind of other product, if it administratively, if this planning commission just notates McKenna 
as needing some kind of barrier because of the pathway. Um, and it, was the applicant um, not interested in doing uh, the evergreen sidewalk? Because that's the only talk of sidewalk that um, was mentioned by a staff. So uh, that would, you no, you're not, that's not something that would be changed now. Uh, no, but, uh, they always knew they was going to have to do a, a sidewalk on Evergreen and uh, and discuss a sidewalk in the walking area, in the buffer area, uh, you know. Uh, sure. The, 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 uh, the barrier was never uh, contemplated. Uh, I'm sure we could come up with something, might do something, maybe a wrought iron looking, you know, something. Yeah, just something to keep the than, children than out of the fence, parking you know. lot with some openings for uh, someone getting to their car. I certainly understand that part, you know, that that is doesn't, you know, is an attractive nuisance for a kid who's walking to school because they would learn the same. But OK, you yeah. know. So how do we phrase this in such a way that the applicant is able to uh, to talk with the staff and get somewhere where they can actually do something? I, I, I do have another question before uh, you know, before we move on. Um, you know, we're calling this a sidewalk. Um, can 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 it be uh, uh, labeled as more a walking trail or something? Because when you label it as a sidewalk, then you have to, then you go into ADA issues of uh, compliance, and there's a lot of trees in there, and they'd be kind of difficult to. Uh, I anyway. think that the the main thing is the the connectivity from the neighborhood that that, like Brian said, is is asphalt. It's not a concrete sidewalk, but it's it's making sure that that pathway is separate from um, the parking lot and and yeah. isn't seen as an attractive nuisance for kids. And yeah. so putting something that along that McKenna area would be, um, and it's a plant, like, like Margaret said, it's a plan unit development. So these extra things that need to go along with the application would be positive. And, and I think in everyone's best interest at the end of the day, but keeping the trees, of course, very important. Suzanne, to answer this question. We're still talking about a sidewalk on Evergreen, but this fence on McKenna. Is that correct? Yes, the separation. From no, no, I, I, we're still talking about a sidewalk on McKenna. Is that part I of the plan, think, Margaret? I thought it was just a barrier between the parking lot and what correct. Is just keep the trail. pathway open. On, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not, not McKenna, I'm Evergreen. Evergreen. Right. That's what I was yeah, asking yeah. too. Yeah, there's still a sidewalk on Evergreen. Okay, so we got a sidewalk on Evergreen and this barrier that can be approved administratively by the staff, but I don't want us requiring them to do any work or any improvements within that walking path because that's a city right of way. And right. if they do some improvements, somebody gets hurt, the city gets sued. So I just would rather not that be an issue, just the, just the fence on the north side or the buffer on the north yeah. side. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And at the risk of being redundant, Evergreen will have a city standard sidewalk. Um, if the commission so chooses, there will be a barrier uh, three feet in height, depending on how the commission prices it, along the unopened right of way for McKenna. Okay. Is that three foot minimum? I mean, uh, can it be higher than that? You know, I, I got the sense from the commission. No, higher than three feet because of children, you want to be able to see them. Okay. Uh, okay. I got you. And for them to be able to see you. Yes, <laughs> mostly that. Yeah. Or to but stay out of there. <laughs> stay would, out. <laughs> but it was a, a irrelevant point, but a three foot fence, a child can jump that fairly easily. So uh, uh, that, that would be my concern. If, it, if that's the safety barrier we're talking about going up on that north side of the parking lot. 
Yeah, it's probably six feet fences on all three other sides today. So, but our chain link. And if it's wrought iron or something, you can right. see through it. So then that the three foot no longer is an issue. Correct. So it's going to be a three foot minimum. Right? That's I mean, what I was saying. And transparent. Yes. Yeah. Whether it's chain link or wrought iron, it needs to be. Yeah, least. you got to see through it. Correct. Four feet tall. I mean, at the end of the day, it, if you got a kid that wants to get in the parking lot, they're going to get in the parking lot. I've climbed and jumped fences a lot taller than six feet before. So, I mean, it just <laughs> is what it is. But a, but a three foot fence is very tempting for a child just to jump for the fun of it. So, <laughs> as long as it is see through, there's visibility. Yes, it can be higher. Um, somebody had mentioned hedges, and hedges, like I said, I wouldn't want anything taller than 36 to 42 inches. And the hedges, kids go in and out all the time, trample them. So it has to be some kind of material that, you know, is going to keep the kids out of the parking lot, which is a very busy parking lot because the church is very active, which is a good thing. So, you know, I think everyone's going to work towards the right direction um, and it hopefully can be done administratively and keep it and keep the kids out of harm's way. And, and it's, it's 200 feet, so I'm not making light of that, but it's, you know, it's not asking to, you know, put fencing around everything or, old, you know, parking lot that's already in place because there's sidewalks around them. Any other questions, comments, or discussion by commissioners? Hearing none, um, I'll entertain a motion. I would move to approve subject staff recommendation, or do we want to take this in multiple pieces? Um, let's let's take it in let's take it in multiple pieces because of the. Uh, findings of facts, I believe. So part A, subdivision. I would move to approve the subdivision. Subject staff recommendations. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Item passes. Uh, part B, the PUD. Is there a motion? Uh, move to approve subject to staff recommendation with findings of fact um, A, C, D, and E. Uh, adding the uh, requirement for a minimum three foot transparent uh, barrier between the parking lot and the McKenna Drive right away. Second. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? And oh. we know that's something where the applicant will work with the administration so that, you know, everyone's on the same page for safety and what the city thinks best and staff. So that it's, um, it's a good thing. And I appreciate the commission's willingness to um, make sure that pathway is um, connected and safe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item passes. Item C, planning approval. Is there a motion? Uh, move to approve subject staff recommendations. So we have Second. we have findings of oh yeah. Oh A B I'm sorry, with finding effects A, B, and C. I'll second that. Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? And the condition of that buffering and, and safety mechanism just needs to be added because they talk about the, the evergreen having a sidewalk and stuff. But so just as long as each one of them echo the idea of what, what is with this parking lot, the, the new additional parking lot. Because when you read the approvals, you'll see 
that like number two says revision of the site plan that talks about and that's the planning approval so i just want to make sure that every that it's reflected in all of the different i just realized that it was just more than part of the pud okay so so what is it what do i need to uh, how do i need to amend this motion because uh, we already have the the buffer um, or the the barrier it's so. part of the well it, it's probably it's probably overkill because it's in part of the PUD, but it wasn't part of the planning approval. You see what I'm saying? So just to make sure it doesn't get lost in the mix. The additional uh, part of the of the PUD, which was what you said about having, it just needs to be part of the planning approval too. It's if we're separating everything out. Okay, then I would move to, uh, <laughs> to amend my motion to include uh, a, a note that there will be a barrier between the proposed parking lot and the McKenna Drive Highway. Great, thank you. I'll second that. <laughs> Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Moving to item number eight, 4583 Cypress Business Park Drive, <laughs> subdivision. Mr. Chairman, Alan Cameron is recused. <laughs> Mr. Cameron is recused. <laughs> Bless you, Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have admitted Jay Watkins, Adam Durer, and Bruce Morris uh, for this application. Okay. Hold on. Jay, can you hear us? Yes. All right. Adam? Hey, sorry about that. I'm I'm on. I was uh, taking the other screen out of commission. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. Bruce Morris, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chairman, we're ready. Okay. Uh, the applications are for review, the subdivision, as well as the zoning are both recommended for approval. Have you read the condition? And uh, I do need to bring to the commission's attention, uh, you received an email from me earlier today and it's reflected in your revised recommendations agenda, the addition of a condition to both a reasoning and the subdivision. I just wanted to bring that to the commission's uh, attention copies of that were provided to Mr. Watkins and Mr. Doerr. Okay, thank you. Have you had a chance to review the conditions? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, Jay Watkins. Maynard Cooper and Gale, uh, 11 North Water Street, Suite 24290, Mobile 36602. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be in front of y'all today. Um, a little deja vu here. We were with y'all uh, probably two meetings ago with this same site. Uh, in that meeting, we uh, obtained uh, a subdivision approval, a planning approval to allow warehouse and distribution in the B3 section of this uh, site, um, and also a PUD because of uh, the two lots uh, were, were being used for one building. Since that meeting, uh, the applicant has obtained uh, fee title or contract to obtain fee title to uh, two uh, of the driveways that are reflected, um, which now allow us to come to you and ask for a rezoning of the entire lot, what is proposed as lot one, and um, the uh, so resubdivision of the property to allow the development parcel to be one parcel and then where the two driveways have been carved out for those two uh, remaining lots to be uh, resubdivided as individual lots. So we have a three lot subdivision today. 
Um, we are aware of the planning staff's recommendations and conditions. And if Margaret, if you wouldn't mind leaving that map up for a moment, that would be helpful. Uh, we're aware of the, of the staff's recommendations and the new additional recommendation uh, that was agreed to this morning. And uh, the applicant is agreeable to all of those recommendations. And um, we would like to ask for one additional consideration while we are before you today. Uh, if you look at the map in front of you, this is a, uh, 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 just a, a line drawing of the subdivision plat. You'll see running uh, east-west through the site, there is uh, on the old, what would have been the old lot one, lot two property line, there is a 20 foot uh, easement for uh, mobile area water and sewer. Uh, and there's also a 10 foot drainage easement uh, that is a city drainage easement. Uh, we've done some research and have worked with both engineering and planning staff and have determined that that 10 foot drainage easement was not a written easement uh, granted to the city of Mobile, but is a private easement that was re reflected on an earlier subdivision plat. Um, Malls has agreed to vacate their 20 foot uh, easement. Um, and so that easement will be going away. In talking with Mr. Anderson, as well as Mr. Amberger and the staff, uh, we understand that we can uh, request for that 10 foot drainage easement, which has not been opened and which only carries water uh, for this particular site to be vacated or removed from the plat by simply removing it from this plat, which will be recorded uh, together with a note on this plat reflecting that the city engineer had agreed to the removal and referencing the old plat. Uh, we've also spoken with the title company and they're agreeable to removing that easement as an exception. So as an additional uh, approval for this plat, we would ask that the uh, commission consider allowing that 10 foot drainage easement to be removed and an additional note to be inserted on the final plat reflecting the approval of that removal and referencing back to the prior plat where the uh, drainage easement was required. Legal is good with that. Um, we've done that at the Publix development on Airport University and a couple of times since then. And this situation meets the requirements of being a private easement uh, where nobody else outside the property has uh, any benefit to this or any interest in it and uh, can be vacated by recording it over, recording over it on a new subdivision plan. And if I could, Mr. Chairman, I'd also add that, of course, this site on lot one, once developed, um, it will have to meet stormwater requirements for the city. And so the water that would otherwise be carried in this easement and dumped out uh, on other folks' property to run out to Cypress Shores will be incorporated into uh, the lot one stormwater detention program. Nick, you're shaking your head yes. Does that mean you're in agreement? But we're, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, it's, uh, that easement looked like it was probably an easement that was just there to uh, to provide you know drainage path when it was two separate lots. So it's really always intended for for them, and so so it's 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 good that it goes away. Margaret, on this application, the one we had previously, it was actually a PUD. So that PUD will just become <clears throat> void and go away. PUD and the planning approval will both go away with this rezoning and subdivision because you will have one lot consisting of B5 and the warehouse does not require planning approval in B5. And Jay, yeah, the applicant is agreeable to every, all the other conditions on the on the application. Yes, sir, Mr. Henry, we're agreeable to that. Uh, in addition to the addition of the uh, traffic impact condition added this morning. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments by commissioner? Any other questions or comments by staff? 
Is there anyone else here to speak for or against it? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion uh, to take it. Uh, we can take it as one. Uh, is there a motion for both the subdivision and the zoning? Recommendations. Or second. Properly moved and seconded. Any Mr. Other? Chairman. Yes. Mr. Chairman, may we ask that the motion be amended to include the vacation of the drainage easement and the additional note on the plat? I'll add that to my motion. I would second. Motion. Motion amended and properly seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposes? Item passes. Let the record reflect Mr. Cameron was recused. Thank you all. We appreciate uh, your help today. Thank you. Thank you. Mis Mr. Gant? Yes. Uh, I'm going to have to bug out. Do we? Do you check and make sure that nobody else will be recused on any of these other numbers? Because I, I don't know what our quorum number is. They're recused on any other item by anyone. All right. Thank you. Sorry, I have to leave early. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. Uh, moving to item number nine, 4250 and 4254 Hallsville Road, Road Subdivision and PUD. This is being recommended for holdover. The owner present. Mr. Chairman, I've admitted Jared Landry. Mr. Landry, can you hear us? Hey, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Uh, your application is being recommended for holdover. Um, you, are you in agreement with that? Yes, that's fine. Okay, it's being held over till January 21st meeting. Um, are there any questions or comments from commissioners or any additional information from staff? No, sir. Hearing none, I, I'll entertain a motion but I'll make the motion to hold this over to the January 21st, 2021 meeting. Second. Proper move and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor for the holdover? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Items held over until January 21st meeting. Thank you, sir. Moving to item number 10, 1901 Hertel Street, same subdivision and PUD and zoning. All items are recommended for approval. Is the applicant present? Mr. Chairman, I'm admitting into the meeting Wenton Yerby and Jamie Roberts. I'm also admitting, I believe, Michael Robinson. Uh, Mr. Robinson? I'm here. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Roberts? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then Mr. Yerby. Uh, Jamie Roberts. I'm also admitting, I believe. Jamie, can you mute? Live string. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yerby dropped off. Um, did I? Where are you? Oh, thank you. Okay, I see you now. All right, Mr. Chairman, before we begin, um, I do want to bring the to the attention of the commission. Uh, we did have comments also submitted 
from Michael Robinson. Those have been provided to the commission earlier today via email, as well as an email from Michael Pierce of the Mobile Housing Board in support of the application. Uh, at this point, Mr. Chairman, uh, we're ready to go on this application. Okay, thank you. The application is recommended for uh, all parts are recommended for temperature approval. Uh, is there any additional information that the applicant would like to provide? I can, uh, this is Wynn Yerby with Hollyhand Development. I can provide a sort of an overview of what um, we're proposing and a little bit of background on us. Um, I'm the managing member of Hollyhand Development. We're based in Northport in Alabama, and we uh, have a, a lot of experience doing what typically referred to as workforce housing development. Um, we work all over the state in places like Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Phoenix City, Anniston, and other places. Um, work with a wide variety of different types of projects. We've probably done well over $200 million worth of development in the last um, uh, over the last decade, for sure. Um, the Mayine school site came to our attention. As we know, the city and the mayor are very focused on um, spurring new development on the south side of the city. Most of these similar type developments have been out in West Mobile over the last decade or so. Um, we also know the housing board expects to be demolishing hundreds of units in the neighborhood in the coming years, and they'll assume there'll be a, a need for uh, re replacement housing. Um, Based on the size of the site and the cost, we're proposing a 92 unit multifamily phase on the front seven and a half acres um, that you're showing there. Um, be a mix of one, two, and three bedroom units, um, be a, a family development. Um, obviously, we have still work to do in finalizing uh, all our architectural and civil plans. We'll be working with the city you know, to complete that. Um, but we do hope to break ground um, sometime toward the end of next summer. Coming summer 2021. Um, plan to use a development style that we've used in several other cities that have been, been very well received in those cities. So we think it will be, um, um, it'll be appreciated in the neighborhood. We are um, working to uh, get a traffic study conducted at this point to determine if we have any traffic issues that need to be addressed in terms of turn lanes or anything like that. Um, the rear portion of the city we're uh, expecting to do a um, development for seniors. Um, this would probably start about a year later, sometime in 2022, uh, excuse me. Um, and we anticipate that being more of a mix of one level cottage style units and a multi-story elevator building. We find seniors sort of like a mix like that. Um, the um, Holly Hand would expect to own and manage the unit for the foreseeable, the, the complex for the foreseeable future. You know, the next 10 or 20 years or so. So, you know, concerns can be, would be, would be the pe people to, to talk to if, you, if there's any concerns in the neighborhood. Uh, we need a three lot subdivision <clears throat> for the two phases, but also because uh, it was determined there could potentially at least some wetland areas along the borders of the property. And um, we need to sort of cut those out of the parcel that we have for financing requirements. So, um, Anyway, that's that's the overview. I'd be happy to address questions. All right, thank you. Um, any questions or comments by commissioners of the owner? A question for staff. Uh, we only received one response back from from some of the neighbors. Or two two responses back. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Hembry, uh, you do have input from Mr. Uh, Robinson, who is at the in the meeting and would like to speak when his turn arrives. Uh, you do have input and support from the Mobile Housing Board, Mike Pierce. Uh, I believe Bert can review we had a late submission like a few minutes ago via email bert could you bring that up i'm sorry i disconnect everything yes it's submitted by l williams and they had six questions i have forwarded these to the planning commission members 
and the questions are, will accommodations be made for traffic concerns of the present residents of the area? How much property will be required for the finished project? Who is the managing member of Holly Hand Development? Why here, why now? Uh, should the plan involve inquiring, acquiring homes, will those homes be purchased for market value or will eminent domain be invoked? And then how many of these hearings are scheduled as of now? So we get the applicant to respond to as many of those questions as he could. Yes, I believe I addressed the first four, but I can go over those again. Um, uh, you don't need to, because they're not really relevant to our consideration. So we already have that information. I okay. And then the uh, fifth and sixth questions are really not um, something I can address directly as far as, well, the fifth question about acquiring homes, we would not be acquiring any adjoining homes or anything. We would just be acquiring the, um, the former school site. And, and if I could, this is Jamie Roberts from the, the Neighborhood Development Department. Uh, we're, we're working with a developer on this project um, as far as workforce housing. The, uh, there was one question on the original series of questions. I know it's not really relevant to the Planning Commission directly, but it was asking about uh, potential assistance for neighboring property owners. They, we have some existing programs they may not be aware of that would be able to assist and coordinate with this site for existing property owners. Jamie? Yes. Uh, this is Beth Rich. Uh, does the council person, have they been at the table and involved? Um, it, you know, because it is abutting the residential and, you know, um, so has there been any um, back and forth dialogue with, is it, is it CJ or is it LaVon? Uh, this is Council Smalls District, uh, but both okay. of them do know about it. Uh, okay. They're both for it. And, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So thank you. So I just wanted to make sure the council person, you know, was in the loop. Thank you. Hey, there. Are. are there any additional questions or comments from staff or commissioners? Just to answer yeah. the question. So, so I would, uh, hold on just one second. I, I would say that, uh, just to go ahead and make sure we don't leave one of these unanswered. The city is not interested in invoking eminent domain uh, for, for the purpose of this. Uh, our, our position is that there is there are plenty of lots around the city that can be uh, that can be developed by developers and plenty of blighted uh, lots that the city can uh, that the city can look at trying to remediate other ways. There's no need for eminent domain. And uh, Matt, if I can. Uh, eminent domain is actually not allowed with the funding that we have. Uh, Congress excludes eminent domain from the project. There you go, even clearer. And um, uh, if I may, to answer the last question, will there be other hearings? Uh, the Planning Commission is the final authority on the subdivision. The planned unit development, the planning commission is the final authority unless it is appealed. And then for the rezoning, the planning commission, of course, is only a recommending body with a final and second public hearing to the city council. Great, thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else here to speak for or against this? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Michael Robinson is in the meeting. Uh, he is a concerned citizen on this application. Okay, Mr. Robinson, do you have any comments? I do. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, uh, Michael Robinson. I'm actually a former resident of Mobile. I'm a um, native, if you will. I now live in Columbus, Ohio. My mother lives in Mobile on Hertel Street and has been a resident there for a number of years. And she's now 79 years old, received the zoning um, update letter in the mail and asked me to help interpret or get involved for her. So I'm representing her and her interest in the um, property at 1907 Hertel Street. Uh, several other questions that I had regarding the traffic that's been addressed by the uh, developer. I think there was uh, a mention made that the city does have uh, programs in place for residents that are looking to enhance or um, maintain or update their property as well that my mother may not be aware of that I'd love to learn more about. Uh, and we don't have to take time to do that now. 
Um, I guess one of the other questions that I had was answered around the um, the developers planning to develop and own this entity and manage it. I guess the question that I had is whether this is intended to be market rate housing uh, for families, individuals, as well as this proposed second uh, phase two for seniors. Uh, just want to get an understanding whether this is what type of uh, property stock is this planning to add to the community? Um, I, can, I can address that. We are planning on using applying for tax credits um, to help uh, finance the project. And um, there are, with the, under the Internal Revenue uh, Code, there are um, income limits typically in this area. I think our income limits would be in the $40,000 range, somewhere in that area. Um, and then, um, the, as, as you noted, the, 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 the proposed phase in the rear, phase two, would be age restricted. Age restricted? Right. Or the, 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 it would be restricted to seniors. Okay. And I couldn't tell from looking at the plan if there was any... Um, intention to increase green space or maintain green space, just thinking of, you know, from a high density standpoint, you're going from a, a residential area now and just trying to see how much of a feel will that maintain in the community of an actual community and not just a, you know, major strip someplace that's being plopped in the middle of a community. Well, well, what's there right now is actually not is not a, a residence. It's a, it's a vacant school. Okay. Any other questions or comments, sir? Uh, no, I guess the only other point I make. I heard that someone ask about the who's the city representative or the. Um, the elected official in that area. I don't know if there's been any series of meetings with the residents in that area, if there is any schedule. Um, with my mom being 79 years old, I think a lot of our neighbors are either as old or uh, folks that are not just uh, savvy that would be able to attend from a electronic meeting standpoint. And I don't know if there's been any plans in light of COVID to try and do anything in person or to allow folks an opportunity to uh, learn more about this in person as well. Jamie, do you do you know if anything's planned in the community with the um, council member since it's a rezoning? Most of what's happened is uh, people calling the council directly, and we've been answering questions as they come up, or the planning commission got the few questions they got. Um, with COVID going on, there's really not a good way to do a meeting that we've even still got right. Now. Yeah, it's it's been difficult. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if Margaret would like, and if this is okay. Um, pass the gentleman's name along to me and I'll make sure that CJ is aware and um, I'll tell him that he's outreaching to, you know, ask questions directly to her, to his mom's representative, if that's okay. I'd be more than happy. Uh, Mr. Robinson, are you fine with that? Yes, that's, that's fine. Okay. okay. Be very happy to do that. Thank you. I have no uh, no further questions at this time. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions from staff or commissioners? Or any further discussion? I have a question for staff. Uh, I'm looking through the application. I'm sure it's on here somewhere, but I might be overlooking it. Parking requirements, I'm sure, are being met. They will have uh, more than sufficient parking on the property, Mr. Hembree, for both uh, phase one and phase two. They will exceed the minimum requirement. Okay. And the last question is uh, fire department, all, all the access for the fire department is being, requirements are being met as well? Well, fire is given an opportunity to review and comment during the planning commission process. Uh, so, we have modified our standard fire comments based on their input for all cases. And that is so noted in this report as well, which specifies minimum distance requirements to fire hydrants. 
And so when the site comes in for construction, it will be additionally reviewed by fire during the permitting process. Okay, it's just such, it's a big size. I just wanna make sure we're covering all our bases. Okay, thank you. Any other clarifications or questions? Hearing none, I'll take this in parts. Part A subdivision, uh, which is recommended for tentative approval. Is there a motion? A motion to approve, subject to staff recommendations. Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item A passes. Item B, the PUD, recommended for tentative approval with findings of facts. Is there a motion? Move to approve subject to staff recommendations with findings of fact uh, A, C, D, and E. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good morning. Any opposed? Item B passes. Item C, zoning, recommended uh, for approval. Uh, is there a motion? I would move to recommend the rezoning. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item C passes. And thank you for your your time. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to item 11, 2425 St. Stephen's Road, God's Kingdom Church Ministries, it's a PUD and a planning approval both recommended for approval. Is the owner uh, in this meeting? Uh, I'm there. Yes, sir. I've admitted Mr. Post. I do need to bring to the commission's attention input from Mr. Ricky Wright that was forwarded to the commission via email earlier today. Um, it appears uh, his, his largest uh, concern was regarding uh, vegetation. Uh, owner being present, have you seen and are aware of staff uh, comments? I'm Vince Lacoste. I'm not the owner. I'm with Bethel Engineering. I met with the owners earlier today, and I did review all of the recommendations uh, with them. And they are agreeable to all, except they would like consideration uh, to one specific um, condition. And that is under number four on the traffic conditions. There's some reference to uh, re-recording or replatting the subdivision only to remove a note that restricts access to Brownlee. Uh, in this case, an access is being put in only for emergency access and will be signed as such. And we would request that the requirement to come back and re-record the plat simply to remove that note, but not be placed uh, on the owners. Okay, staff, your uh, comments or concerns about that? that plat was recorded? Yes, uh, it was recorded several years ago. Um, I have the recording information I could give you. It, if it states denial of access, you know, that would include for emergency purposes. Yeah, but can't a PUD overrule notes on a plat? No. Okay, so the plat will have to be re-recorded just to remove that note. Can that be done administratively or does it have to come before this body? Uh, Mr. Anderson, what are your thoughts? Administratively. 
Okay, well, if we can make that revision to the condition to do it administratively. Yes. Now, what I would like to do is instead of there being a quote formal submission, I do want to have the commission's approval and I can just bring that up, bring it up to them um, because I'd like to have the plat. Is it possible that, well, we would need to do that in the January 7th meeting. I would put it under other business on the agenda. We've done things of that nature before. Okay. Okay. Any other comments, questions, or clarifications from commissioners or staff? Margaret, I'm sorry. I must have lost you just then. Uh, in order to, we're going to pass, I mean, staff is recommending approval, but with, an op, with a, uh, a note about addressing item number, I think it was four, regarding traffic. Yes, and I'm sorry, I don't have the full packet of comments in front of me. Um, Number four says placement of a note on the site stating the following traffic engineering comments. Uh, a flat restriction exists on this site that limited the development to one driveway to either St. Stephen's Road or Brownlee Street. Why don't we uh, delete the placement of a note, the first portion of it, ending at the words to remove the restriction on access. Delete that portion from the commission, uh, excuse me, from the condition. And then the staff will bring that plat up to the commission at their January 7th meeting under other business to remove that note. Now, in so doing, we're going to be recommend very specifically though, that it is to allow emergency access only. Okay. And you want that in the form of a motion on the PUD, right? <laughs> yes. Um, what I would suggest is as uh, by, as recommended by staff, removing from condition number four, if the 2012 subdivision plat was recorded, dot, 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 to remove the restriction on access. Okay. I'm trying to get to that motion quickly so we don't forget what we're talking about. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Anyone here to speak against this? Yes, sir. Okay. Hearing that, I take it in two parts. Uh, part A, the PUD. Is there a motion for finding a fact? Move to approve based on staff recommendations, findings of facts, A, B, C, and D. Amending item number four. Margaret, give us the wording, please. <laughs> to delete if the 2012 plat was ever recorded through to, to remove the restriction on access. The rest of the condition will remain. That's my motion. Second. second. Properly moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Item uh, A passes. Item B, planning approval. Is there a motion? Move to approve based on staff recommendations, findings of facts one, two, and three. Second. Property moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Item passes. Thank you, sir. Um, 
I don't see any other business. Is there anything else, Margaret? No, sir, other than I do wish to the commission a very safe and happy holiday. And I appreciate y'all sticking with us through this Zoom process, uh, at least through definitely January. Okay, thank you. And happy holidays to everyone. And again, have a good holiday. And thank you for your service. Have a good day. All right, thank you.